Welcome to Moneybags, the show where this lot are battling to grab themselves a fortune, quite literally. Every week, one million pounds will travel down this very money belt. But who will get their hands on it? This is Moneybags. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Moneybags. On the last show, Lee was playing for a staggering £71,000 in the final, but ended up bankrupt and sadly went home with nothing. However, the rest of this week's players are ready, waiting, hoping to get their hands on some big money today. So it's time to randomly select the two players in the first head to head battle. In pole position, it's Gaz. <laughs> Gaz is a senior quality engineer from North Wales. This is his second time to the money belt, but he's yet to make it past the head-to-head. -head. And he'll be up against... Troy! <laughs> Troy is a children's entertainer from Bournemouth. Last time he made it to the triple header, but missed out on the final by one bag. Hello, Gaz. Hello. We did a bit too grab happy last time. I think I was, yeah. Troy, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to be back. Here's how the game works. A million pounds has been split into 100 money bags, 20 of which have been selected to randomly come out today. You'll see a series of questions. You answer the questions by grabbing the bags you think are correct. If it's correct, you bank the cash and move into pole position. Grab a wrong one, you move to the back, and you're frozen out of the next bag. There are also some very special bags out there, good and bad. But more about those when we see them. Every round contains five correct bags across two questions. But you never know how many wrong bags we'll see. The player with the most money at the end of the head-to-head -head will go through to the triple header. Right, there's big money to play for. There's still a colossal £406,000 up for grabs this week. But will any of the remaining three £50,000 bags make an appearance on the belt today? All clear? Yeah. Yep. First question. Food and drink brands founded south of Cadbury. You see, the names of food and drink brands founded in Britain pick up the brands that were established in a location further south than Cadbury's, which was founded in Birmingham. Let's have a look at the first bag. Tunics. Tunics. Gaz left that one alone. Troy has gone for it. Why have you gone for tunics, Troy? I just got a vibe from the bag. And that's been working for you so far, the vibe thing, hasn't it? Yeah. Let's have a look. Tunics. Was it founded south of Cadbury? It's the wrong answer and a bankrupt. Now, the bankrupt means if you had any money at the moment, Troy, it would just drain out of your account. You'd have no money whatsoever. Tunics was founded in Uddingston near Glasgow. You're frozen out of the next bag. Guys, you're on pole position. Food and drinks found at South of Cadbury. Ginsters. Ginsters, was that founded south of Cadbury? Guys, you look like you know that one. Well, I've obviously had a guess at it, so I think it is. <laughs> yeah, you've had a guess. <laughs> well, Ginsters founded south of Birmingham. £3,000 and a steal! <laughs> Ginsters founded in Cornwall. Yeah. Cornish pasties. Puts £3,000 in your account. You can't steal anything, cos no. you could have stolen Troy's highest value bag. However, Troy hasn't got anything at the moment. <laughs> but, Troy, you're back in play. Let's look at the next bag. Vimto. Is that found in south of Birmingham? Gaz has gone for it again. See you getting grab happy again. Yeah, is I'm... it going to your head, Gaz? I think it is, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> something tells me it was, it was down south. And... It's a bit of a risk, Gaz, you know, because you, you are on, the, on pole position. You've yeah. got £3,000. If this is a giveaway, you're in the hole with no cash. Let's find out. Wrong answer and a giveaway, Gaz. <laughs> and a giveaway. <laughs> Which means you have to give away your highest value bag to Troy. <laughs> Puts Troy on £3,000. You've only just picked that up, Gaz. Yeah. Vimto founded in Manchester. <sighs> You're frozen at the next bag, Troy. Please take hold. <laughs> See the next bag? Lee and Perrins. Lee and Perrins. Troy, you've gone for that one. How confident are you about this? I feel quite conf uh, confident. Lee and Perrins, was that founded south of Cadbury? Should we find out? £5,000! 
They make Worcestershire sauce, founded in Worcester. Troy, you're on £8,000. Gaz, you're back in play. New question. Species of shark. You see the names of species of animals? Pick up the ones that are species of shark. Gaz, is this good for you? Yeah, it could be, yeah. I mean, I like David Attenborough. I watch nature programmes, so hoping. All right, let's get right to it. You're in the hole at the moment. You've got no money. Let's have a look at the first bag. Smooth hound. Is that a shark? Troy, leaving it alone. Gaz, not interested in that. Smooth hound, is it a shark? Let's find out. £3,000! Smooth hound or a shallow water shark species? Guys, we're trying to keep the money in the game, so let's not let that happen again. Let's see the next bag. Loggerhead, is that a shark? Troy says yes. Have you heard of the loggerhead shark? Have you? I think I've heard of something like that before. Uh, would you have gone for that, Gaz? Uh, no, I wouldn't have done, because of hammerhead. Uh, loggerhead, is it a species of shark? Oh, it's wrong and it's a giveaway! It's a giveaway! Oh. <laughs> a loggerhead is a type of turtle. <laughs> Oh, it means you've got to give away your highest value bag, which is £5,000. You've got to give that to Gaz. Get you some money in the bank, Gaz. Put you on £5,000. Troy, you go to the hole, Gaz. Please take pole. <laughs> Let's move on to the next bag. Poor Beagle. Is that a shark? Gaz leaves it. Troy's frozen out. Can't play along. Gaz, you didn't fancy it? No, for obvious reasons. I associated it, associated it with a dog. <laughs> I hope there's no money in this one, guys. Here's a poor beagle, a species of shark. Let's find out. £5,000 of steel, Troy. Oh. See, guys, you, you should try and avoid <laughs> those erroneous grabs, Gaz. Never heard of it. You could have had all the money in the game there, couldn't <laughs> you? All right, now listen. Troy, you're back in play. On £3,000. Guys, you're in pole position with 5000 but fair warning, that was the fourth correct bag of the round. There's only one more correct bag left to come out, and it's very close. One bag could change it all. Is it this next one? Black tip. Is that a shark? A black tip shark. Gaz is saying yes, it is. Have you heard of this one, Gaz? I think so. It sounds like a shark, didn't the black yeah. tip shark? Yeah. So, guys, if this is the last correct bag, then let's hope it's got a sizable chunk of money in so you've got a decent wedge to play with in the triple header. You're in pole position on £5,000. Is this the last correct bag? Is black tip a species of shark? Shall we find out? £10,000 and a steal! <laughs> it takes your bank account up to £15,000. You steal Troy's highest value bag, which is all his pot, £3,000. It takes your money up to £18,000. The black tip shark is a species of Requiem shark. Oh, Troy, unlucky. Let's hear it for Troy. <laughs> but who will gas face in the triple header later in the show? Find out after this short break. Yeah. Welcome back to Money Bags, where Gaz won the first head-to-head -head and takes £18,000 into the triple header. But it's time to find out who will be joining him. Randomly selected in pole position for the second head-to-head -head is... Robin! <laughs> Robin is a self-employed writer from Kent. He's played at the belt twice this week, but has yet to progress further in the head-to-head. -head. And he's facing Tash! <laughs> Tash is an admin officer from Cheshire. This is their second time at the belt. The last time she faced Troy, who never let a correct bag get to it. Robin, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Why is it you can't seem to get past the head-to-head? -head? I don't know, but maybe third time lucky. Tash, welcome back. Do you think you can beat Robin? Yeah. Oh. I'm here, I've got okay. to, yeah. You fit to play? Yes. Ready? First question. Chemical symbols that represent an element that begins with a different letter. 
You're about to see a series of chemical symbols. Pick up the symbols that represent an element that begins with a different letter to the symbol. For example, if you saw the symbol AU, you should pick it up because it is the chemical symbol for gold. Bit of a grimace from you, Tash. I don't believe anyone comes on a quiz show without studying chemical elements. And... You've met it out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at the first bag, shall we? HG. What does that stand for? Robin's let it go. Tash has let it go. Robin, you look like you were about to grab that. I thought I'd play it safe. OK. Play it a bit cautious. Let's see, HG. Is this right? £3,000! Oh! Robin Mercury oh. is represented by the chemical oh. symbol okay. HG. Yeah. So, you would have been right to pick that up. Mm. Let's see the next bag. N. What does N stand for? Robin's leaving it again. Sasha, look at you just geeking. It's like you gave up waiting. Oh, I might as well pick it up. I want some in my <laughs> All right, N. Does it represent an element that begins with a different letter? Let's find out. It's wrong. N stands for nitrogen, nitrogen. in this case. So, Tash, you're frozen out of the next bag. Robin, this one is just for you. Let's see if you can make it pay, Robin. F-E. Oh, Robin goes straight for that one. Uh, so, F-E. I think it's iron. Does it represent an element that begins with a different letter? Let's find out. <laughs> Three thousand pounds! <laughs> F-E is the chemical symbol for iron. Some money in the bank, Robin. You're still on pole position. Tash, you're back in the game. Let's change it up for you, Tash. New question. Songs with primary colours in the title. You see the titles of UK Top 40 hits and their artists. Each title contains a colour that has been omitted. If the missing colour is a primary colour, grab it. The primary colours in question are red, yellow and blue. Let's have a look at the first bag. Blank dress, sugar babes. Blank dress. <gasps> Ooh, Robin, you've gone for it. What are you thinking? I was thinking, what colour would you do a song about? Uh. And I thought it would probably be red. Is the song blank dress? Is it red dress? Let's have a look. £25,000 and a steal! <laughs> red dress was a hit for the Sugar Babes. Robin, you've got the £25,000 in your bank. Leads you to £28,000. You could have stolen Tasha's highest value bag, but at the moment, Tash hasn't empty. got any money. So it leaves you on £28,000 and still in pole. How are you feeling now, Robin? Optimistic. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at the next bag. Blank Velvet, Alana Miles. Ooh. I think it could have been black and I picked it up too soon. Oh. Blank Velvet, Alana Miles. Was it a primary colour? Let's find out. No, it's a wrong answer. It's a wrong answer. It was black velvet. Yes. Uh, Bobby Vincent was blue velvet. You lose pole position, you move to the hole and you're frozen out of the next bag. Tash, get into pole. <laughs> Tash, this is your first time in pole position ever. Feels good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, let's have a look at the next bag. Blank onions, Booker T and the MGs. Tash has let that one go. Robin, he's frozen out. He couldn't play. Robin, would you have gone for that? Green onions, I it's think. It's green onions. I think Robin might call this one, you know. Blank onions by Booker T and the MGs. Is that a primary colour? No, it's a wrong answer to give away. It's green onions. <laughs> Robin, you're back in play. Let's have a look at the next bag. Blank Jean, David Bowie. Tash has left oh, it. Blue in there. Robin's left it. Tash, why'd you leave that? I don't know, to be honest, because when it went, I thought maybe it was blue Jean. But... Mm. And Robin, you're nodding your head. I thought it was blue Jean, but I thought I didn't need to take the bag, because yeah. she didn't, so uh, I wasn't going to take the risk. You played quite 
cautious. You don't want to let money go as well. What if this is a fortune to take into the triple header? I'll be sad. You'll be sad. <laughs> 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 OK, so uh, blank jean, David Bowie, is that a primary colour? Should we find out? £50,000! Oh, oh, you let that go. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh. The song is called Blue Jean. That could have worked for both of us. Tash, that could have put you quids in. I know, I'm so frustrated. I keep... I'm saying all the right things, the right answers, but not doing the right moves. 50 grand, guys, down my chute. There's only one more correct bag. Tash, you're in pole, but you've got no money. Robin, you're in the hole with £28,000. This is the business end now. Let's have a look at the next bag. Bodak Blank, Cardi B. Oh, old Tash has pounced, and you, you look like you know what you're doing. Bodak Blue, it's got a good ring to it. Is it a song with a primary colour in the title? Let's find out. £4,000! <laughs> the single was called Bodak Yellow. It got you £4,000 into the bank, but it's too little, too late, cos, Robin, you're the winner with £28,000. <laughs> There's just one more place to fill in the triple header. So who's in the next head-to-head? -head? Well, in pole position, it's... Emma! <laughs> Emma is a video effects production coordinator from London. Emma has played every day this week and got through to the triple header twice. And she's up against Joe. <laughs> Joe, the civil servant from Essex, goes played twice this week, but has yet to reach the triple header. Can she do it today? Hello, Emma. Hello. Welcome back to the show, Joe. Thank you. All right then, fit to play? Yeah. Okay, first question. Games which use dice. You see the names of popular games, pick up the games which use dice or die. Let's have a look at that first bag. Articulate. Does that use dice? Emma, right from the pole position, you've gone for it. Have you played Articulate? I haven't, but... Cos I just, in the back of my mind, I can see a board, like, you spin it, it's got... It's a coloured die. OK, OK, OK. Let's have a look. Articulate, does it use dice? Wrong answer, and a bankrupt. Which means if you had any money whatsoever, it would disappear from your account right now. Emma, it means you've lost pole position already. Yeah. And you moved to the hole. <laughs> Joe, please take pole. <laughs> Articulate has got a spinner. You're right about the spinner. But no uh, die. But no die. Darn it. You're frozen out of the next bag. The good news keeps on coming, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. All righty, let's have a look at the next bag. Risk. Do you have a dice in Risk? Joe's not going for it. Emma's frozen out and can't play. Risk <laughs> is a game which uses dice. Should we find out? £15,000 and a steal. I know. Emma. I know. Oh, oh Risk does use dice. Emma, you're back in play. Joe, you're on pole. Let's see the next bag. Exploding kittens. Oh! And Joe, you've gone for exploding kittens. Uh, do you know this game? No, but it sounds really fun. <laughs> and I'm assuming <laughs> it's some sort of like game where you roll a dice however many times and you move, it explodes or something. The game of exploding kittens that does exist, does it use dice? Let's find out. No, it's a wrong answer. Oh. Exploding Kittens is a card game, Joe. You're going to have to lose the pole position. You're going to go into the hole. You're frozen out of the next bag. Emma, please take pole. <laughs> Let's see if we can get some money out of this bag. Frustration. Is that played with dice? Emma didn't think so. Joe, if you wasn't frozen out, would you have gone for that? Yeah. Oh, it's you know this one. It's a traditional roll your dice. It's like the popper thing in the middle that has the dice inside. That's the one it is, isn't it? Yeah. Quite frustrating to watch it go past. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it's not big money. Uh, frustration. 
Is it a game played with the dice? I think we know it is. Let's find out. £4,000! Frustrated has a popomatic die. That's 19 grand you guys have let go so far. Joe, you're back in play. Let's see if we can get some money out of this bag. Mouse trap. It's that guy dice. Emma has gone for it. Making full use of pole there. Emma, have you ever played the game? I think I have. You think you have? Can I know it's a multiplayer game? I'm like, surely there has to be a dice. Mousetrap is it a game that's played with a dice. Let's find out. £1,000! £1,000! <laughs> well done. We've got some money on the board. Emma has a slight lead after the first question, but it's anyone's game. Who will make it into the triple header? Find out after this break. <laughs> Welcome back to Money Bags, where Emma and Joe are hoping to win themselves a place in the triple header. Joe, so far, has banked absolutely nothing, but in the lead with £1,000 is Emma. Let's get straight to it. Next question. Correct facts about Norway. You'll see a series of statements about Norway. Some are true, some are made up. You need to grab the ones that are true. Let's see the first bag. Norway has a monarch. Is that a correct fact about Norway? Emma's let it go. Joe, from the hole, snaps it up. Has it got a monarch? Let's find out. £1,000 and a steal! <laughs> Norway is a constitutional monarchy like the UK. Harold V became king in 1991. It means you get £1,000 in your bank account and it means you get to steal Emma's highest value bag, which is £1,000. Okay. Putting you on £2,000, Joe. Please take pole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this game is so frustrating, isn't it? Yes. Now, we've, fair warning, we've seen four correct bags in this round, so there's only one left. But remember, there could be some wrong bags back there too, OK? Um, let's have a look at the next bag. It tops the all-time Winter Olympic medals table. Oh. Joe, Joe. If this is the last correct bag, you're through to the triple header with your £2,000 on whatever is on that bag. What are you thinking about this now? Norway always do well. Okay. I had a feeling if I didn't get it, that Emma would have. Would you have gone for it, Emma? Yeah. It tops the all-time Winter Olympic medals table. Is that a correct fact about Norway? Let's find out. £25,000! <laughs> Norway took their all-time Winter Olympics medal tally to 368 after the Pyeongchang Games. That's £27,000 for Joe. You're taking that through to the triple header because you are the winner! Bad luck, Emma. So Joe will face Gaz and Robin to decide who will play today's final. Let's see how they line up in the triple header. Randomly selected in pole position, it's Gaz. In second position, it's Joe. At the end of the line, it's Robin. OK, so this is the first time all of you have got to the triple header. Now, Robin, you played very cautiously in the head-to-head. -head. I missed out on £50,000. You're going to be braver now? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I don't want to lose that again. Are you all fit to play? Yep. Yeah. Come on, first question. Famous people whose first name and surname begin with the same letter. You see descriptions of a range of famous people. Pick up the people whose first name and surname begin with the same letter. In each case, we're talking about the usual professional name they are known by. All right. Let's have a look at the first bag. P performer who sang the title theme to Goldeneye. Ooh, Gas has left that Joe from the hole. Gives it a miss. Robin at the end of the line. Not happy with that. Now, Robin, do you know who the song was by? I can't remember. All right, let's see. The performer who sang the title theme to Goldeneye. Do her first and surnames begin with the same letter? Should we find out? £4,000! <laughs> 
GoldenEye theme was performed by Tina Turner. Oh. That's £4,000. That passed you by. Gaz, you were on pole. You could do with this oh, money. That's £4,000 that goes down the chute. Still all to play for. Next bag, please. Footballer sent off in the World Cup final, 12th of July, 1998. Oh! Oh, Gaz. Gaz, that was a late snatch as well. I needed to take a little bit of a gamble this time. I needed to get up above them, so... OK, Gaz, Will it Gaz, pay off? Will it pay off? That is the question. A footballer sent off in the World Cup final, 12th of July, 1998. Did his first and last names begin with the same letter? Let's find out. Wrong answer! Marcel Desailly was sent off for France against Brazil in the 1998 World Cup final. I was thinking Zinedine Zidane. He was sent off in the final in 2006, though. OK, so... Costly mistake, Gaz. Joe, please take pole position. <laughs> well, Gaz, you're frozen out of this bag. You're at the end of the line with £18,000. Joe, you're in pole. Let's see the next bag. The first Secretary of State for exiting the EU. The first Secretary of State for exiting the EU. And Joe. I think it's David Davis. David Davis now. I think. If this is the correct bag, let's hope there's a sizable chunk of money in it. The first Secretary of State for exiting the EU. That his first and last names begin with the same letter. Let's find out. £1,000 and a steal! <laughs> it takes you... You bank your £1,000, it takes you to £28,000. And now you get to steal some money, Joe. Now, Robin's highest value bag is £25,000. Gaz's is £10,000. Which one are you going to steal, Joe? This is really horrible. Um, Robin, I'm really sorry. OK, so you're taking Robin's 25,000, put it in your account. It brings you up to 53,000 pounds, Joe. <laughs> David Davis was the first Secretary of State for exiting the EU. Well spotted. Let's have a look at the next bag. The actor who played Jill Monroe in Charlie's Angels. Oh, Joe leaves that. Robin has gone for it. Robin's coming straight back. Who are you thinking it is, Robin? I'm gambling. I've only got 3,000 to lose, but I know I'll be locked out, but I'm going to take that risk. OK. A, an actor who played Jill Monroe in Charlie's Angels. Do their first name and last name begin with the same letter? Should we find out? £15,000 and Steele! That was pure luck. You banked your 15 grand, Robin. <laughs> which takes you up to 18 grand now. Wow. It gives you a chance. Gaza's highest value bag is £10,000. And Joe's is £25,000. I'm sorry, but I've got to get you back. That's fine. <laughs> Joe's just nicked it off you, and you say you're going to nick it back? Yes. He's having it back, Joe. <laughs> it brings you up to £43,000, Robin. That risk really paid off, Robin. Jill Monroe uh, was the name of Farrah Fawcett's character in Charlie's Angels, so it paid off. Robin, the good news just keeps on coming because you moved from the hole into pole position. <laughs> so, Robin, you're on £43,000 from pole. Joe, you're in the hole with 28000 Gaz, you're at the end of the line with 18000 We're halfway through the triple header. When we return, one of these players will be taking their place in the Money Bags final. It's all topsy-turvy at the moment. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to Money Banks. One of these players is just minutes away from playing in today's final. Well, they'll try and take home all the money they've bagged today. Gaz has £18,000. Joe has £28,000. But out in the lead with £43,000 is Robin. But can he hold on to it? Robin, you've played very cautiously so far, but that risk has really paid off. Let's get straight on with the next question. TV shows first broadcast in the 1990s. 
All right, then, let's have a look at the first bag. Stars in their eyes. It's that first broadcast of the 90s. Robin from Paul has taken I'm it. Just hoping it wasn't the 80s. You're just hoping it wasn't the 80s. Why have you gone for it then if you were so unsure from Paul there? Because I think it's the 90s, but it might have been late 80s. OK. Robin, if this is an incorrect answer and it's a giveaway or a bankrupt, it's yeah. going to be. It's going to be not good for you, is it? No, it's not going to be good for you at all. You like taking risks now, don't you? I mean, you've been so cautious and all of a sudden you're like, hey, go all in. <laughs> yeah, but I, if, if they got it right and had a steal again, mm -hmm. so I have to try and see if I can avoid that. Well, tonight, Matthew, Robin, <laughs> is going to be right or wrong. Stars in their eyes. Was it first broadcast in the 90s? Let's have a look. £4,000 and a steal! <laughs> you banked your four grand, Robin! And... Well, Joe's highest value bag is £25,000. Gaz has got £10,000 as his highest value bag. Which one are you going to steal, Robin? <laughs> Thank you. Joe, I think he pointed at you. He's taken your <laughs> highest value bag, which is £25,000. He's put it into his pot. He's on £72,000. <laughs> the stars in their eyes smoke machine was first fired up in 1990, so it was close yes. again, Robin. Now, fair warning. That was the fourth correct bag in this triple header. There's only one more to come out. But are there any wrong bags back there? Let's have a look at the next bag. Chuckle Vision. It was that first air in the 90s. <sighs> Robin lets it go by. Joe. Uh oh. I think it's wrong. I think it was earlier. If you think it's wrong, though, Joe, why pick it up? Because I remember it and I wasn't that little. Barry and Paul Chuckle, the To Me To You, To Me To You programme. OK. <laughs> Let's hope for a steal. Chuckle Vision was it first broadcast in the 1990s. Let's take a look. It's wrong and it's a bankrupt. Oh, Joe. That means you lose the rest of your £3,000. You move to the end of the line and you're frozen out of the next bag. Gaz, please shuffle up. <laughs> Barry and Paul Chuckles first. Chuckle Vision aired way back in 1987. Blimey, well before I was born. <laughs> oh, well before. That was before you were born. Yeah. Oh, do you know what? It's cost you. Saves your life for being young, doesn't it? <laughs> you're frozen out of the next bag, Joe. OK, it's a bag that could change everything. It's just between you, Robin, and you, Gaz, this bag. Let's see it. This morning, was that fair broadcast in the 90s? This morning. Oh, Robin left it. Gaz has gone for it. What are you thinking, Gaz? <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping it's right with the steal, but... So this is a big risk, then? A huge risk. You've got £18,000. Yeah. But if it is a steal... You get to steal Robin's highest value bag. This could be a game changer, couldn't it? This bag. This morning was it first <laughs> broadcast in the 1990s? Let's have a look. It, wrong answer, and it's a giveaway. We first visited this morning sofas in 1988. <sighs> it's a giveaway as well, guys. You've got to give away your highest value bag, which is ten thousand pounds. Now you need to think about this. Who do you want to give it to? I'd like to give it to Robin only because he's got a good amount there, so I'll give him a bit more to try and have a good chance at the final. Ah, oh, it's well done, Gaz. Yeah, well done. He's given it to Robin on £82,000. <laughs> Gaz, you do have to move to the end of the line now. You are frozen out of the next bag. Joe, can you shuffle up? So, Robin, it's all going your way. <laughs> We're just looking for one more correct one. Next bag, please. The Office. Was that first broadcast in the 90s? Robin says no, he lets it go. Joe lets it go. Gaz, you're frozen out and couldn't play. Joe, why did you let that go? I think it was 2000s. I don't think it was as early as the 90s. Let's see. The Office did it first uh, in the 1990s. Let's find out. No, it's wrong. It's wrong. You're right, Joe, it first aired in the year 2001. So, Gaz, you are back in play. Uh, we're still looking for the last correct bag. Is it this one? Scrap Heap Challenge. 
Robin, letting it go. Joe, Joe, Joe. If this is the last correct bag and it's a big steal, then you're in with a chance. Let's find out. £5,000! <laughs> Happy challenge first aired in 1998, so it was right. You put £5,000 in your account, show, but that was the last correct bag. So, Robin, you are today's finalist and will now be with a chance of winning a massive £82,000. <laughs> well done, Robin. Can Robin take all those money bags home? Let's find out as we play Money Bags the final. Today, a mammoth won £186,000 travel down the money belt. And, Robin, you grabbed an amazing £82,000 of it. It's been a roller coaster, a real roller coaster. I mean, it, there's this skill, this chance. You just never know what's going to come, what's going to happen next. Uh, what would it mean to you to win that? We foster three severely disabled children. And if I could win a lot, we would put in a hydrotherapy pool for them because that's the one time that they can get out of their chairs, be supported and really feel free. Well, we all want you to win now, don't we? Yeah. Yes, we do. Yeah. I mean, what a fantastic thing to put the money towards, Robin. Are you ready to play? Yes. Let's play Moneybags the final. Well, Robin, your £82,000 has been split across four money bags of increasing value. You now face four questions in order to take home the lot. For each question, you'll have a choice of two bags. One's correct and contains some of your money, the other is wrong and contains a bankrupt sending you out of the game with nothing. We do not want that, do we? No. no. Grab the correct bag on question one. It contains 10% of your money. That's £8,200. The correct bag on question two takes you up to £16,400. Grab the correct bag on question three. You'll have half your money, £41,000. It's a lot of money. The final bag has the rest of your cash, so grab it to win your entire pot of £82,000. Do you want to see the first question? Yes. Fruit grown on more UK land than black currants. You'll see the names of two fruits. You should pick the one that is grown for farming on a greater area of land in the UK than black currants. I can tell you that 23% of the land used to grow small fruit in the UK is used growing black currants. This is according to the 2020 figures from DEFRA. Remember, the correct bag is worth £8,200. Grab the wrong bag and you will be bankrupt. We do not want that. We really don't. We want you to make those kids' lives better. Do you want to see the two bags? Yes, please. Let's see the two bags. Raspberries. Strawberries. Get the raspberries go. You've gone for the strawberries. Why have you gone for the strawberries, Robin? Raspberries are on bushes. Strawberries are low down. I don't think they grow so high. I think they would take up more land mm -hmm. than raspberries. OK. You didn't seem too sure. No, it's a tough question, I think. If you're correct, you'll take the £8,200 into the next bag. If you're wrong, you will be bankrupt and you'll leave the game with nothing. Let's find out. Yes! Oh, yes! <laughs> We've had a few dodgy results this week. At this stage, I am so glad you've got £8,200, ladies and gentlemen. The raspberries account for 13% of the land used to grow small fruit, but strawberries are grown on 27% of that land. How are you feeling? <laughs> Even more nervous. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know what I'm going to say, don't you? Yes. We don't want you to leave with £8,200, Robin. We want you to take home more than that. Your second bag is back there, ready to come out, grab it, 
I mean, it'll take your toll up to £16,400. Serious money. Let's have a look at the next question. Letter that appears more times than R in the names of the months of the year. R appears nine times. There's a lot riding on this, if I get it wrong. There is. OK, okay remember, the correct bag will take you up to £16,400. The wrong bag will send you home with nothing at all. You can let both bags go by and you'll still walk away with the £8,200, which is a hell of a lot of money. Would go a long way. Let's have a look at the two bags. A. E. Which letter appears more times than R? You've let A go, you've gone for E. Robin's gone for E. It's got to be more. He's in the game. It's got to be. Okay, Robin, you're saying it's got to be more. There's Are you a few sure A's. There's a few more? A's, but I think there's more E's because E is the most common letter in the alphabet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you must be thinking this is a risk worth taking. I think so. Let's find out. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> e appears 11 times. Uh, once in February, June and October, twice in November, three times in September and December. Oh. A only appears seven times. Robin, you've got £16,400. <laughs> that is amazing. You know what I'm going to say. We don't want you to leave with £16,400. We want you to leave with more than that. We want you to get that pool. Your third correct money bag is about to come out. If you grab it, you'll have £41,000. Shall we have a look at the next question? Yes, please. Scottish Stadium with a capacity of over 60,000. You'll see the names of two famous stadiums in Scotland. Grab the one which has an official seating capacity of over 60,000 for sporting events. I don't know too much about stadiums. Remember, the correct bag will take your total up to an incredible 41,000. The wrong bag will send you home with nothing. You can leave both bags, let them pass you by, and you're still... <laughs> Leave the game with 16,400. Massive amount of money. Yes. Are you ready to see the two bags? OK. OK. A Scottish Stadium with a capacity of over 60,000. Let's see the two bags. Hamden Park, Glasgow. Murrayfield Stadium, Edinburgh. He's let Hamden Park go. He's let Murrayfield go. I can't risk it. You can't risk it. OK, you've let both bags pass you by. It means you still walk away, Robin, with £16,400. <laughs> We're so happy for you. We are so happy for you. Thank you. However, if you had to choose one of them, which one would you have chosen? Murrayfield. I think I might have gone for Murrayfield as well, you know. If this is the correct bag, Robin, you would have won £41,000. Should we see if it is? OK. Let's take a look. Oh! Hampden Park has a capacity of a little under 59,000, whereas Murrayfield Stadium has a seated capacity of over 67,000. It's the highest capacity stadium in Scotland. If you'd gone for that, you would have left with £41,000. But ultimately, it doesn't really matter. You still leave the game a massive winner. An incredible £16,400 goes to Robin. Well done, Robin. Congratulations once again to Robin.
A jaw dropping £220,000 will travel down the money belt next time. But who will grab it? They'll all be with me. Why don't you join us? Because this is Moneybags. Well done, Robin.